So let's look at the following example in which we're going to calculate the net electrostatic force acting on a point charge as a result of two other point charges. So let's begin. Three point charges are located at the corners of an equilateral triangle with a side length of two meters. So we have point charge one, point charge two, and point charge three. And the distance between any two point charges is given to be two meters because we're dealing with an equilateral triangle. So if the charge of point charge one is equal to positive six microcoulombs, the charge of point charge two is given to be negative. 12 microcoulombs and the charge of point charge 3 is given to be negative 5 microcoulombs calculate the net electrostatic force acting on point charge 3 as a result of these two point charges. So we begin by examining the free body diagram, the force diagram of point charge number three. Now we're going to have two forces acting on point charge three because we have two other point charges. So we choose going this way along the x-axis to be positive and going up along the y-axis to be positive. So let's begin by examining the force acting on point charge three as a result of point charge two because these two charges have the same exact sign that means they will repel one another and so the force acting on point charge 3 as a result of point charge 2 will point along the positive direction along our x-axis given by the following vector force 3 2 now Let's examine the force acting on this point charge as a result of point charge 1. Because the signs of these electric charges will be opposite, that means they will attract one another. So this point charge will attract this point charge and the force will point in this direction towards point charge number 1. So that means we have force 3, 1 and the angle that this force makes with respect to the x-axis will be 60 degrees because we're dealing with an equilateral triangle. So in order to calculate the net electrostatic force we have to find the x component force and the y component force acting on this point charge. So let's examine all the forces acting on this point charge that point along the x-axis. So remember going to the right along the x-axis is positive and going to the left will be negative. So the sum of all the forces acting on point charge 3 pointing along the x-axis is equal to well we have the positive force force 3, 2, and we have a negative force, and the negative force is, is, is the x component force of this force pointing in the opposite direction along the x-axis. So that is cosine of the angle between this vector and the horizontal multiplied by this quantity. So we have negative cosine of the angle theta multiplied by force 3, 1. Now let's move on to calculating the sum of the forces acting on point charge 3 as a result of the forces along the y-axis. So we have one force along the y-axis and it points upward so that means it's positive and this force is the y component force of force 3, 1. So that means sine of the angle theta, this angle multiplied by force 3, 1. Now, let's apply Coulomb's law. So we have force 3, 2 becomes our constant K multiplied by charge Q3 multiplied by the charge Q2 divided by the distance between them squared. So let's say the distance, uh, the length of this is s, so that's s squared. So minus cosine of the angle theta multiplied by k multiplied by q3 multiplied by q1 divided by s squared. So because we're dealing with an equilateral triangle, our distance for both of these cases will be exactly the same. So let's move on to this case. This becomes sine of the angle theta multiplied by k multiplied by q3 multiplied by q1 divided by by s squared. Once again, the s remains the same. 
So now let's actually plug in our known values. We know the K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9 newtons multiplied by meter squared divided by coulomb squared. Now to use these charges we have to convert them from microcoulombs to coulombs. So 1 microcoulomb is equal to 1 times 10 to negative 6 coulombs. So that means we simply multiply each one of these values by 1 times 10 to the negative negative 6. So our K becomes 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Our Q3 is 5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Our Q2 is 12 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And our S is 2 and we square that. And we subtract cosine. This angle is 60 because we're dealing with an equilateral triangle. So this becomes 0 0.5 multiplied by K, multiplied by the charge of Q3, multiplied by the charge of Q1 divided by 2 squared and we get approximately 0 0.101 newtons. Now let's calculate the sum of the forces acting on point charge 3 along the y-axis. We have one force, so sine of the angle 60 multiplied by k, multiplied by the charge q3, multiplied by the charge of q1, divided by 2 squared, and that gives us 0.0584 newtons. Now to find the net electrostatic force acting on point charge 3, we have to take the square root of the sum of the squares of fx and fy, where fx is this quantity and fy is this quantity. So the square root of the following two square sums. So 0 0.101 newton squared plus 0 0.0584 newton squared. Take the square root and we get 0 0.117 newtons is the magnitude of the net electrostatic force acting on point charge 3. Now forces have magnitude and direction. So what exactly is our direction? To find the direction, the angle, we have to use the following equation. We take the inverse tangent of the ratio Fy to fx. So fy is 0 0.0584 and fx is 0 0.101 newtons. So we plug that into our calculator and we get an angle of approximately 30 degrees. So that means that the force, direction of the force will point in this direction at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to our x-axis.